When I think about body language, I think about being in person with someone. But in the world of Zoom, what does body language mean? Listen to this episode and find out. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg, speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, here to help you in your wedding and event business sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Alan Berg, and welcome back to the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I invited a very special friend, a fellow National Speakers Association member, to be with me to talk about body language, because when I think of body language, I think of Tracy Brown. Hey, Tracy. Hey, Alan. It's so good to be with you. It, it is so good to be with you as well, virtually, and that's exactly what we're talking about today, is being together virtually. And I was thinking about this the other day, because... We always have this thing with Zoom, you know, where do I look? Where do I look on the screen? How many people are on here? And I started thinking body language. You know, I see that person over there. Are they really paying attention? Are they not paying attention? You know, what do I look like to them? And I said, who do I know? You know, I live in New Jersey, so you got to have a guy. In this case, I have Tracy. She's not a guy, but I have Tracy. And so Tracy, What have you, I know you've been on TV and you've been on all kinds of stuff. Have you had any discussions? Has anybody else asked you about this? Yeah, body language on Zoom, you bet. Here's the deal, Alan. The short story is most people aren't good at reading body language in person. And when it gets on Zoom, you got almost two hands tied behind your back. However, excuse me, however, there's so much you can still tell. Um, But I think it's important to uh, make sure that you set yourself up for success first, like pay attention to yourself first before you start paying attention to everyone else. And um, some of that is just, and you know, this is just basic cinematography, right? Make sure people aren't looking up your nose. And and here's how you can tell. If you look at yourself on Zoom and you can see your ceiling, (laughs) you are doing it wrong. Yes. yes, So you need to make sure your your head kind of brushes the top of your screen um, or has very little space at the the top of your screen. And and that's that's a good way to come across powerfully, right? Right. Because you're being read just like you're trying to read other people. So, um, so that's, that's tip number one, you know, make sure your lighting's good and, and that your audio is good. People will forgive bad audio. They won't forgive bad sound. It, it, it's interesting you say that because I noticed when I started the recording, my camera pulled back. So did mine. Didn't, Why did I that happen? I didn't do that, right? It pulled yeah. back. So I was much closer. My head was closer to the top. When I edit these, when I'm doing a solo one, I will zoom in more and put myself towards the top. Here we have mm-hmm. this uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of Zoom in terms of the recording because you are you you're you are closer in than me and your head is closer to the top. But it's interesting. I I didn't tell it to do that, and I noticed yours pulled back as well. Now, the, so the interesting thing is, you say to pay attention to yourself, but then of course during the call with someone, you don't want to be paying attention to yourself. Well, exactly. And um, I was uh, in an article in the Wall Street Journal on this uh, not long ago, and they and they quoted some uh, researchers from Stanford at, in the same article. And they said that we actually get like the reason we have Zoom fatigue is that it's really, really taxing on our system to watch ourselves all the time. So there are ways you can uh, set Zoom so that other people can see you, but you can't see you. Right. So um, so that's that, that can be an option for folks if you're feeling Zoom fatigue. Yeah, I, I read that article and I thought that was really interesting. You're a professional speaker. I'm a professional speaker. We're used to seeing ourselves. We're used to hearing ourselves. You know, the whole thing, people, I don't like my voice. People always like, I don't like my voice. I don't like the way I look on camera and stuff like that. It, it it doesn't phase me that way. When I'm looking, I'm looking as if it's somebody else because I do want to critique the background, the lighting, the sound, all things like that. Uh, those are important. Uh, but I remember reading that article. And I was like, yeah, I, I, you know, you notice yourself like I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. And of course, every time you look at yourself, the other people think you're not looking at them. Oh, right. So that's just the thing. So um, in the the way you set up your your Zoom window, mine is minimized quite a bit. So you're on top. And Mm -hmm. so I can look at you 
and uh, it's pretty close to looking at, at my camera, which right. is not exactly the same, but it's pretty close. So yeah. hopefully, I'm hoping you, you're not looking close enough to notice. <laughs> right. Right. No, but, uh, I, I have the same thing. I don't go full screen. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be this big on my 27 inch monitor. Yeah, no. I always have it down. You're up at the top there. I, mm -hmm. I probably could turn off my own video, but I'm below. I'm not even seeing that. Um, I did see another one of our speaker friends that had talked about this thing that you put over your uh, your um, over your monitor, so you can mount your camera in the middle of the monitor, so you're actually looking at the camera and the person. I, I yeah, I, I, I saw that too. I saw. It. Did you get what? Did you you? Uh, I made it. One up. Yeah, you. I made it up. one up. So th this is a Lucite uh, um, mm -hmm. document stand, and I cut the top off, and I Velcro mounted my camera mount, and I could hang it there. I've done it a couple of times. Right now, it's still more distracting for me because yeah. it's new. But if I put you, like you said, right at the top, you're right below the camera there, the, the difference between this and this is not that much. Right, right. So, <laughs> so you know, taking a little time to set up, I think, is is valuable because, you know, when you're in a sales situation, when you're meeting people and they're putting, uh, you know, it, it can be a, a lifetime worth of dreams in your hands. Uh, you want to make sure that you you uh, come across as though you care, and uh, and and cinematography does that. Like it, as much as we think it's not a big deal, like it, it's huge. It is so huge. So uh, right. background, lighting, sound. Make sure you you're uh, paying attention to all that. Now, hopefully, uh, haven't just said all that. We are hopefully stepping out of forced. 100% Zoom meetings, um, but nonetheless, the the principles remain the same. Is that you know you want to make sure that you come across as well as you can um, in 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 person, right? And what does that mean? Oh, lighting, clothes, right? <laughs> and, right. Well, and, all the same things. Yeah. Well, I actually just did a, a, another podcast episode that's live already, which is will we be using Zoom post COVID? Yes. And I, and I think one of the benefits is that people have gotten comfortable with it more. And a lot of people in the wedding and event industry used to kind of force their customers to come in and meet with them mm -hmm. because they didn't know if they could make the sale. And a lot of them have learned how to make the sale this way. It's like, well, you're going to save yourself time and them time oh, yeah. if you just meet <laughs> now. Oh, you know? totally. So much yeah. time is get saved and you get a little more connection, but maybe not full commitment, which I think is the is the key there. Um, because clearly, you know, if let's say, um, you're a caterer and you're, and you're talking dishes, you probably going to want to go see the, the setup, right? A little showroom can, can really help. Um, but other stuff, it's just not necessary. So and you can show pictures and you can show video yeah. and you can do stuff like, so what are some of the other things uh, on body language when we're talking about head and shoulders here? Uh, what are some of the, the things for people to be paying attention to or working on? Right. So I think you want to make sure that you're reading people and, and that they're, um, they're really where you think they are. Like, are they, are they in the palm of your hand or do they have more questions or are they just there because their, uh, wife made them be there? Like those kinds of things or, uh, fiance. fiance right? right. Yeah. Um, so one of the easiest things is to understand that, um, well, you want to learn how to detect lies, right? Because that, okay. that's really important. Buyers are liars. So whenever the body language doesn't match the um, the words, right, then, you know, wait a minute, something's not quite right. So uh, for American people, when you nod your head like this, this means yes. Mm -hmm. When you shake your head like this, that means no. Mm -hmm. So if someone says, man, I really like that dish set, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, like you got to be careful, right? You got to be right. careful. Um and uh, it, because you want to make sure you're answering their unspoken questions. Right? Unspoken questions, right? Because mm -hmm. you had the, the liars, Clark. I, I remember I was in your beta test there. I, wasn't that the yeah. first one that completed it, I think? I, you I, were. I think you I, were. Yeah. My um, It's called Fraud Spotting. And um, a lot of salespeople like it. It's an online class. It's it's on my website, bodylanguagetrainer.com. And, and we'll put all this into the show notes. Yeah. So everybody has that there. So, so the body language doesn't match the words they're mm -hmm. they're shaking their head no but they're they're saying yes words yeah right? what are some of the other things that wouldn't match 
Um, well, you, well, you want to make, that's the easiest one for right, right. now. Um, you want to make sure you're, you're understanding people's interest level. So okay. are they leaning forward? Like, oh, wow. Like checking that out. Or are they, are they leaning back like this? Right. And even if, even if your chest up, you can see when someone crosses their arms. Right. Right. Yeah. And when, when they cross their arms there, it, 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 there's no absolutes on like, cause body language tells you what's on someone's mind doesn't tell you why. So you don't know, um, are they uh, putting a barrier between themselves and, and you, right? Like, okay. like they don't like their idea. Um, are they cold? They could be right. cold. My, my husband freezes me out of this house and, um, <laughs> Since we've been working at home, it's been real interesting to agree on the thermostat level. So, so you see me cross my arms because I'm a little cold. Okay, right, <laughs> so, right. right. Um, so that, that, that I, I love that point. It you see what they're doing, but you don't know why. They're, yeah. So you okay. got to ask. So you can, right. you have to ask more. You, you can't just go down your list of questions. Right. You have to stop, and you have to say, "Huh, seems like you have something more to say about that," or maybe it's something else on your mind that I'm not answering. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so uh, the, the most common thing is that when someone crosses their arms and then we'll get into some other stuff is that they're comparing what you're presenting to what they know and what they know is different. Okay. okay. So, so there's a little bit of conflict there and maybe there's some new information that they weren't ready for or are trying to integrate. Right. So you want to make sure you're answering questions around that. Now, if someone um, rolls their lips in, like that or uh, or covers their mouth and then starts to speak after that uh that they're holding something back typically it could be emotions it could be um information right so you want to make sure you dig down into that like like if like if if you were to ask me tracy what's the budget for your wedding and i and i said well you know it's about thirty thousand. Well, there's, there's maybe some negativity there, or I may not be telling you the whole truth. Right. Okay. Which is a question I actually tell people not to ask their couples because they are going to not tell you the truth because they're going to hold back anyway. Yeah. Um, and Phil M. Jones, another speaker, author, uh, said all budgets are made up anyway. So, oh, you know, totally, yeah, totally. But yeah. that's just an example. Yeah. Right, for no, but, no, but I love yeah. it. So the, so, the, so the pursing of the lips before they give the answer mm -hmm. is I'm, I'm holding something back. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, the, if your lips get sucked in over your teeth. Okay. Now, if, if, if while you're talking to someone, they, they tighten up their lips like that, like tighten up their mouth area, that is silent disagreement. Okay. So mm. that's super important because it's real subtle to catch, but you need people agreeing with you. Um, right. And, you know, you need them agreeing uh, likely as a couple, if you're uh, dealing with them, uh, like two people in a, in right. a meeting. So, um, or, or, you know, it could be a bridal party, right? There could be a whole gaggle of, of people. Yeah. That, the pos that, you know, the posse with. could definitely be with them. Uh, and now, so now you might have people in different windows as opposed to sitting next right. to one another on the other mm -hmm. side of that. So now you're, you're, you're paying attention all over how I, I know how you said to do this in person. Cause I read your book, body language yeah. confidential. Good. So if you have multiple windows going on here, Mm -hmm. How do you find out the decision maker? What would be the clues for you who the decision wow. maker is? You know, it, um, it's not the Brady Bunch. Like, they, like they're not going to look up at each other in, in the windows there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> nobody's asked me that. Nobody has asked me how to find the unconscious leader of a group on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So here is what I because in person, let's talk about in person because they mm -hmm. may not be in one window. They may all be in the same window. So mm -hmm. it, um, okay, the lowest person in the totem pole will will have their hands in their pockets okay? okay so you don't need to worry about that person okay uh the the decision maker may or may not be the bride or groom the mm -hmm. decision maker may or may not be the person paying the bill okay what you're looking for is the unconscious leader of the group and so yeah. um i don't do you know if everybody sees each other the same in zoom meetings um, you know, I, I think I it could think be, all, yeah, I think it could be all over the place, but, uh, well, yeah, in a zoom meeting, everybody mm -hmm. can see everybody. Right. Uh, but unless they're not they're on in the same spot, that's the question. Cause I don't, they think are they not, are. they are not, right. they are, they are in, well, first of all, you can reorder zoom windows. Some people don't know that if you click and hold someone's video, mm -hmm. you can slide it to a different place. Um, but otherwise, uh, they tend to come in 
based upon where you came in. Then if somebody leaves and they come back, that's going to change. Uh, if the settings are such that the speaker gets highlighted up to a, Right. a certain place, you can do stuff like that. So it, yeah, it's a, it's a little harder, A little but sketchy. So it's what a little you sketchy. want to, what you want to do to the best of your ability is see who the bride or groom refers to when they see whatever you're presenting, right? Okay. So And again, for anybody listening here, it could be a bride and a bride. It could be a groom yeah, and a it groom, could be anybody, right? right? The Yeah. couple. So on, on the couple, uh, so I think important point in case anybody missed this, the person paying the bill may not be the decision maker. They Right. may not be the alpha in this group. Mm -hmm. So who, what we're looking for, and this is what, again, what I learned in your books, who is everybody looking to or Mm looking hmm towards? And I don't mean physically necessarily, but that is, that is a clue there. Yeah. For the, for the decision, who are we looking for approval Yes, from? exactly. So, so what I, what I was telling people in person is if I, if you ask a question, so let's just say it's, it's two brides. Mm. And if I ask a question to one of the brides, does she look at her fiance? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so Or, if, if she looks at the fiance, that's the person in charge generally, right? At right. least for that decision, right? She Right. could look to her mother or father, right? Right. Right. That could, but, but see, you also got to understand, you may have, like I said, a whole bridal party there. Mm -hmm. Look who, uh, who sits in the nicest chair. Okay. Who, uh, cause, and this is what I tell my, my, um, venues and my bridal shops to do. You get one chair that looks like a throne. Right. And see who the group wants to sit there. That's your person who's the unconscious leader of the group. Most times they'll also cross their legs towards the leader. Okay. Right. And point So, and have their feet pointing, even if, yep. even if they're, they're looking at somebody else, if their feet are pointing Mm towards hmm someone, you know, and again, nothing's perfect because sometimes you just happen to Right. point your feet over there, but you're looking for these patterns, Mm right. hmm Of this Yeah. kind of stuff here. Mm hmm So on, on zoom windows, then On Zoom, it, it has to be verbal. I think it has to be verbal. right. Who's On, talking, on. who's answering the question. Who's, who's talking over somebody, right. Things like that. Yep, yep. Things like that. Look who's look who's the alpha in the group. And that's that's where the decision is going to go. Now, the reason that becomes important is because then you only have to convince one person. You don't have to convince the whole group. And if in the risk of not finding the unconscious leader of the group is that they may be the bad apple that spoils the bunch after they leave. Okay. Okay. So um, that's So the, the, the super sister, important. the, the sister maid of honor or the mother who didn't have the wedding that she wanted when she got Mm married and now is trying to control the daughters. The -hmm. Yep. daughter Mm wants certain things and mom's going to spoil it. Mom's going to just -hmm. Yep. It could be. cut, cut, cut it off at the knees Mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. It All right. could So be, how or, do you. or go for it full bore. Right. So you need to, Right. you just need to make sure you know who that person is. And I had a wedding, uh, 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 Stardust celebrations down in Dallas. They had me in to train their, their team. They have two shops and, uh, one of the, uh, associates came to me. She goes, you know what? I use this all day. She goes, I've never sold every dress that got tried on all day. And so she goes, one of those dresses was $30,000. I'm like, that's right. It's because you decided to start paying attention. Like that's what this can do, but you Right. got to learn to pay attention. So what do you do when the, uh, uh, let's, let's just call it a bride and groom in this particular Yeah. situation. You have a bride and a groom and mom, it has a different idea and mom's trying to control this. And you can see on the face of the bride, let's say Mm hmm that every time mom talks, the bride makes faces. Again, this is, this is a zoom thing too, right? If mom is talking and I look and you can see the bride, what are some of the Of I'm disgusted or disdain looks that someone else is talking, Mm -hmm. Yeah. what would I be looking for? Right. Well, we talked about tightness in the lips area. Uh huh. Um, they may do a snarl. You, you can see that I can do it. Um, Yeah. it's, it's like, it, it's a little bit of an Elvis lip thing. You're not Yep. doing it right, Alan. You're not, No, you're I'm bad. not. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. no, don't, don't look at Alan. Okay. It, So, um, but it, but that's discussed, right? So they Okay. can be, cause when I was planning my wedding, cause we got married pretty late. Like I was 41. My mom stepped in on some things and it, it was so exhausting because I'd already kind of been through it. And my mom, we don't live close and, um, I was exhausted, but you know, this, I was exhausted by the whole thing. And, 
Um, well, you just did something. And again, some, a lot of people are listening on audio here, but you just put your hand on your, yeah, on your that's face. Stress. I'm still stressed just, about my wedding. Alan. It's been six so, years so, or seven or something. Tra Tracy is already married six years and yet she's thinking about this. This is important stuff. And you put your hand on your, on your face, yeah, like covering stress. your eyes. Yeah. That, that stress look there. So if, if I was on zoom with you and your mom, your mom mm -hmm. starts talking and you put your hand on your face like that. It's like, I, you know, that's yeah. an official term, by the way. Oi, oi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> here she goes again, right? It's mm -hmm. that here they go again. So right. what do you do in a situation like that? Because uh, it could be that the bride or the bride, and the groom, the bride, and the bride, the groom, the groom, they're paying for the wedding, right? But they just right. invited mom because or mom could invited be. herself, mm -hmm. right? Mom invited herself into this. How do you deal with that dynamic? Well, what you're going to do is make sure that each party feels heard. And uh, if the bride's the one in in distress, right? Like I was, then you got to go. You, you know, you just ask her. Go, hey, sweet, sweetie. You know what's uh, like? I yeah. get you're totally stressed, right? And I get like this is completely overwhelming. Like, what can I do for you? Right. Right. And now, in a personal and, situation, like you can that. do that. Mm -hmm. And I and I've coached that same thing. I probably heard it from you. You know, take them aside and say, listen, I understand. I I also said take mom aside. And say, hey, mom, listen, you clearly have some, you know, strong opinions about what this is. Mm -hmm. I know you want it to be her day or their day or his day or whatever. You know, what's the most important thing to you? Like, what, what do you need? What do you need to have? So you want to try to be their advocate a little bit to, to diffuse that? Is that a good? That's good. And I think also, um, if you if you get people to understand that they're actually trying for the same goal, then that helps too. like. Um, you can say like, like, wouldn't you say like our goal here is to have the most amazing day ever. Right. And everyone's going to be like, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then you start, uh, chunking it down from there, uh, mm -hmm. as to your part in it, as to everyone's little part in it and how, how that goes. Right. And, and generally people will come along with that line of reasoning, um, and start to calm down a little bit. Right. And that's why I say, if we can give everybody a little win and you, know, you might have to say to the couple, listen. We need to give mom something. We need to give her a little win so mm -hmm. that she will back up. Because if, if she's getting shut down on everything, I right. think she's just going to get stronger and stronger into yeah. her opinions there. So let's let's throw a bone over there. Okay, so let's 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 wrap this up a little bit. What what is what else do, do you think everybody needs to know here? In the age of Zoom, we're doing these Zoom meetings, and Zoom has become a verb, so it could be you know another platform. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. totally. <laughs> Definitely another platform here. So what, what else would you want people to think of when it comes to in, in Zoom, this kind of body language? What are we paying attention to here? Um, well, you know what? Let's get off body language. Let's go to tone. Okay. Like, listen to your tone. Uh, you know your tones, right? Are they happy? Or are they sad? Like, you can, you can divide up tones into all different kinds of um, uh, categories, but basically happy, sad, right. Or, uh, happy, right. Un unhappy. <laughs> right? Right, right, so right, 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 right. listen to that tone, like, but be like, believe it the first time. Cause you may not get another chance to have a second time with, with them to understand what they're saying. It's, it's how they said it. Right. And, and so, uh, make sure that you're paying attention to that. Get off your spiel, get off your, uh, you. list of questions and dig down when you see it right. Then do not wait because you're missing the important information so and that this is both ways because your tone matters as well mm -hmm. yeah so their tone you hear something in the tone and you want to you want to take that elephant out of the room and say it sounds like you might not have enough information about that or it sounds like that's not what you wanted to, to do yeah. or it sounds or it or it sounds like wow it sounds like you're getting really excited about the whatever as well. Call yeah, that the, elf, as well. The, the elephant in the Indian wedding that <laughs> you're trying right. to order, right? Or whatever. Right, exactly. You're, you're really excited about it, which is yeah. funny because a friend of mine, um, they were, he, uh, he's of South Asian descent and his wife is not. He wanted an elephant and it was uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And the closest one was in Boston. And it was $10,000 <laughs> ten if they wanted the elephant. And he's <gasps> like, no. No. So they had a beautiful horse with beautiful, you know, uh, regalia on it or whatever, but it was not $10,000 to have the horse. But he was like, I want the, I want the elephant. I'm like, no, I don't want the elephant for $10,000. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there you oh go. So, all right. So, so 
your tone, their tone, paying attention to that, paying attention mm -hmm. if there's more than one person on, who's, who's talking, who is being the alpha there, who is the decision maker, and don't assume it's the person with the credit card or the yep. checkbook. That's right. right. All, That's all right. of those things there. And, and, you know, I would say record them so that you can also play back and listen to your tone and hear. Oh, yeah. now, now, if you don't want to record the Zoom, you could always record just your audio on your phone or something like that. You could you could listen to it. We as speakers know that we want to record ourselves and hear. We're looking for filler words. We're looking for things like that. Um, I noticed by doing my podcasts that uh, I say so to start a lot of sentences. Doesn't really bother me on audio, but when you see it in writing, Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The captioning. The transcripts will get you every time, Alan. <laughs> well, it is the, it's the closed captioning for YouTube. If you're, yeah. if you're watching this on YouTube, there's closed captioning right here. Mm -hmm. We do that from, from the audio. And I noticed I say so a lot. So there you go. So Tracy Brown, uh, I'm going to put it into the show notes. But quickly, if somebody wanted to find out more, you have books. They're on uh, your website. They're on Amazon. Where are your books? Exactly. Yep. My website, bodylanguagetrainer.com. And there's also online classes there um, and on Amazon. Yep. And then the, the lying class that I took, what is that called? Oh, it's called fraud spotting. Fraud and spotting. It, it, if you just go to the store on my website, it'll be right there. And it's what, 22 little short videos. It's, it's micro learning and you will learn uh, how to tell whose pants are on fire by the time you are done with that. Yes. And, and, and Tracy knows that, that I not only took the course, but I would send her sometimes a link to a, a, a news video or something like, okay, wait, here's what I think. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah, you get, sure. which you get all the time from, from news people also watch this politician or watch this someone over there. So you get that. So Tracy, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been so much fun chatting with you. Uh, again, I'm going to put into the show notes, all of the, the links that you can find out more about Tracy. Our books are great. They're nice and short. I like the short books. You can get some information, you can use it. And this is now going to work for you in person as well as on Zoom. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. Full transcripts of this and every episode are available on my website at allenberg.com. And if you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of the episodes, or you'd like to make a suggestion for a future topic or a guest for one of my dialogue episodes, you can email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Uh, please subscribe to this channel, post a review if your platform allows it, and if you don't get email updates of the latest episodes, as well as upcoming workshops and masterclasses that I have, you can join at connectwithallenberg.com. I look forward to seeing you on a future episode. Thanks.